anything that I will ever be or anything that I have been, I owe to the grace of Jesus Christ. And my only desire is to offer myself, to offer that grace to another human being, to another potential son or daughter of the living Christ. He had always had a dream of helping um, the less fortunate. He has been um, very instrumental in um, developing a, a ministry that reaches out to touch the lives of, of folks who are hungry and, and hurting and, and those who need to see the face of Jesus. Um, and of course, this is probably due, due to his experience as he lived through the life of poverty. And so he's very passionate about making sure that our churches come together to address the issue of poverty. Part of the reason why you're in this space, part of the reason why Dr. McCallum and all the adults in this room work with you so very hard is because they believe that you are the apple of God's eye. And they believe that it is important for you to have a place to where you could dream. You need to have a place where you can imagine things that you never would dream of anywhere else. You need a place where you can believe that anything is possible. This dream uh, was formed by Reverend Fairley and he and Melba put it together and uh, were able to help children in the community and they provided um, meals for them and education, help and um, recreation and it was just a, a wonderful, wonderful ministry. I believe that through prayer, God equips, empowers and inspires us with a holy imagination to see the possibility and live the promise. I have known Leonard Fairley for many years. Uh, I got to know Leonard the best when we served on the cabinet together. Bishop Gwynn asked me to serve on his cabinet in 2007 and Leonard began serving on the cabinet in 2005. Uh, Leonard served in the Rockingham district which is our most diverse district as well as the district that includes the largest pockets of poverty and so it included some some great human need. Leonard helped meet that need with um, great compassion and faith he began, uh, while he was in the district, a prayer ministry, a prayer conference. His wife, Priscilla, who passed away in 2013, was a great prayer warrior, and she and Leonard together started that conference, and uh, I know Leonard to be a person of deep faith and great prayer. Leonard Fairley is a leader who is rooted and grounded in the Wesleyan way, and who finds uh, life and gives life to others through his prayer life. When Leonard prays in a group of people, hearts are stirred. Tears sometimes flow, but we all know that we have been in the presence of God. Uh, when I think about Leonard, what comes to mind to me is someone who is deeply spiritually formed. It resonates very deeply with my soul to know someone of prayer, and I look to him as sort of a, a, a desert father for me. Uh, that's someone who I'd like my prayer life to be modeled after. He is a wonderful person, a man of prayer. He sees the possibility and he lives it too, to the very end. He does all that he can for Jesus Christ and the churches in making disciples to follow Jesus Christ. This is the time and this is the place where we act on what we believe and what we know as water washed spirit born people nurtured at a table of the living world. I love Dangerous Dreamers. 
I love people who actually cause the world um, to notice and to watch and to perk up because they actually are able to see beyond what you're able to see. And if there's one thing that I love about Leonard Fairley is that he's a dangerous dreamer, that there's something about the way he imagines a world that it causes people to open up their eyes and recognize this man believes so much about the power of the Most High God, he might actually live like he believes in the power of the Most High God. I've never heard Leonard speak that he didn't talk about possibilities, vision, imagination, and talk about it as if God had this wonderful dream in mind, and we're all gonna get to realize it and live it, and I never leave Leonard's presence that I'm not going, yeah, 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 <laughs> I needed that reminder. Uh, so I give, I give great thanks uh, that Leonard models that for me. I believe that God's desire is to speak that new life into the United Methodist Church in the midst of all of our chaos in the midst of all of our anxiety. When we anchor our belief in the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we truly begin to see the possibilities and live the promise. A big part of Leonard's story is his own personal history. He did not grow up in church. He grew up, grew up in uh, deep poverty in uh, the Rockingham area. And um, he uh, came out of that to the church and to the United Methodist Church. And so he brings that with him, and he brings with that a compassion for people and a compassion for all God's people. I think Leonard will serve well uh, as, a, as a bishop in the United Methodist Church, and he has served and excelled in every area he served in the United Methodist Church. He is someone who does not shy away uh, from the challenges that have been faced in the church before, the challenges in his own life, and that he knows um, for certain that God is at work in the world and that God has good plans uh, for our work moving into the future of the church. I had the good fortune of serving for four years with uh, Leonard on the cabinet of the North Carolina Conference and uh, had interactions with him certainly regularly and find him to be one of the uh, most spiritually engaged persons uh, that I have known. Um, if there was one word that uh, you asked me uh, to describe Leonard, I would use the word integrity. He's a man of incredible integrity, which really comes out of his deep sense of love for the Lord. This man is standing on holy ground every time he preaches, takes his shoes off, and he just allows God's Spirit to work through him, in him, and people are drawn to that. This is a man, I believe, that uh, God has a wonderful promise and there is a gift in this man's life to help advance the United Methodist Church as we move through these days. Seeing Leonard in front of me gives me an idea of what leadership looks like and directs me to um, look at my own faith and take a look at who I am and how I'm being a follower of Jesus Christ. All move have a center. All movements have a power source, if you will, a place where our roots run deep and our spirits, bodies, and mind are nourished with the living water that is Jesus Christ. He's uh, one who acts. Uh, when the time comes, he is quick uh, to take action, but I always feel that it has been done uh, out of his having discerned God's direction in these matters. Uh, he's a beautiful person uh, on so many ways, and I'm just grateful uh, that uh, in God's great providence that he and I had opportunities uh, to be colleagues in ministry. When I think about Leonard, there are probably two words or phrases that kind of come to mind. Servant leader and bold proclaimer. Some people might think that's an interesting combination, and it is. In fact, I find it to be pretty rare that someone can be humble in the Lord and yet bold in what they do for the Lord. But that's Leonard Fairley, just this humble servant who's willing to be bold in what he believes uh, God is doing through him and around him, bold in his ability to help people see uh, the possibilities and to live the promises that God has through us, for us as a church and a denomination. It's been my privilege to know Leonard as a colleague in ministry 
He is someone whom I have greatly admired as he has served effectively as a pastor of a number of congregations in a variety of settings. I was the director of field education at Duke Divinity School and during that period of time I knew Leonard as a field education supervisor and a member of the bishop's cabinet who was very attentive to the formation of young clergy. He was very, very careful to give them what they needed so that they might grow into the likeness of Christ and become more effective leaders in this beautiful church of ours. I've known Leonard fairly for over 30 years. Uh, we've served together in ministry. Uh, Leonard has always been a, a courageous uh, leader, a dedicated person. He loves the Lord. He loves the church. He loves his family. He loves people. Uh, Leonard is a deep thinker, very creative, very passionate, a great preacher. Uh, he, he loves uh, doing new things. He's a visionary. He sees the future, he prepares for the future, and he lives into the future. He is a true leader in this church, and he's a true leader in our community and the small churches of our district. Lord, teach us to pray that we might draw close to you in our joy and in our grief and in our hope and in our despair. When we are bowed down, you have the power to raise us anew. Lord, teach us to pray without ceasing that we might turn to you in search of your healing touch. Lord, teach us to pray that, that we might love, that we might seek, and that we might work for justice and love and peace. For unless we go there, Unless we immerse ourselves in the presence of the living God, there is no justice, there is no peace, there is no healing. And so, Lord, teach us to pray without ceasing so that our entire lives are lived in an attitude of prayer. Open our eyes, dispel our fears, that we will see all of life as holy ground.